Good evening. You all right? Yes, all good, all good. Just sorting of things out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. I might get kicked off, Tim. It's all because right. Because I forgot there's the Wi-Fi is not great here and they're streaming football. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Um, so I might get kicked off. But we'll try. And I might have to go video off, so don't take that personally. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's all good. I'm just trying to figure out how to use this again. It's been like a year since I've used Zoom. And like my, <laughs> no way. I'm like, oh, Zoom. Um... <laughs> right. Um... Just trying to. There used to be a different screen. Never mind. Let me see if I can get this off. All right, there we go. Well, that's better. That's better. A little bit rusty, that's all. <laughs> cool. Just wait uh, a couple of minutes, see anybody kind of rolling in. <clears throat> Excuse me, before we jump in and get started. Uh, I'm just going to mute everybody. That's all right. Just going to mute everybody for now. Mm -hmm. I think that should do it. Just in case anything's happening in the background. Cool, so hope everybody as well. Uh, we should get started really, really soon. So first of all, <coughs> excuse me, thank you very much for uh, joining us, taking your time out of your, your busy schedule on Tuesday night. Um, just gonna wait a little minute or two. It's just got eight o'clock now. Uh, the registration process is normally quite handy because it gets me to see who's sort of joining in, but uh, having to accept everybody and kind of jump in sometimes can be a little bit difficult as well. So um evening leslie I'm sure you're a happy bunny when uh, south africa beat new zealand just a few weeks ago that was good that was good okay cool i'll just wait up for a quick minute or two before we get started <clears throat> my voice has been kind of being a bit up and down a bit kind of crackly so um hopefully it will hold up for the next 60 minutes worth I just need to talk really softly and really politely and, and try not get too agitated or too ranty. I think that's the, that's the key for the next 60 minutes. So in terms of um, videos, feel free to put your video on or your video off. It's always nice to see some faces when you're talking, I guess. Um, but if you want the video off or need to have it off, well, obviously not a problem at all. Uh, I think I have muted everybody just for um, obviously just kind of clarity more than anything else through the kind of microphone for everybody to kind of hear. Um, but hopefully if things go well in terms of time, we'll have a little bit of uh, time at the end to do a bit of Q&A perhaps if we, if we do. So um, we'll see how it goes. All right, we'll see how it goes. Um, cool, let's just wait another minute or two before I start my big ramble. So I see, I see, who's that, is that? Carol and doesn't even show me now. What a pain in the bum this is. All right, Carol, if you can hear me, give us a wee thumbs up, please. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. And there's somebody else there, but it's not showing me your name. My mind along. At least I know it's working. That's fine. Mm -hmm. No, it's not one to play. All right. It's my exact mood. Let me can see that t-shirt. My exact mood today. Chunky and funky. That's the way we roll nowadays. Since my teaching day stopped. Chunky and funky. All the way. All right. <clears throat> 
Excuse me. So let's get jumped in, uh, jumped in and get started. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for joining me, as I've already said. So um, going to make this hopefully as insightful and valuable as possible. Uh, I do appreciate it. it's going to be me pretty much talking for a good 55, 60 uh, minutes or so. I'll try and make it as fairly entertaining and fairly interesting as possible. Uh, we will be talking about a few, you know, numbers and stuff, but that will hopefully be quite a small kind of section. So we're not going to you know, head back to, you know, university or high school grade physics and, and maths, N nothing too complicated. Um, but hopefully uh, things will just make make a lot of sense. And then we'll have a little time right at the end uh, to, to iron out any, any issues, any thoughts, any questions, any, any anything you wish. And of course, uh, if you think of something, you know, tonight, lying in bed, God, God forbid, you know, you think about this later on or tomorrow or next week, whenever, feel free to reach out on email, on, on Instagram, on, on Facebook, wherever you, wherever you fancy, wherever you, you, you uh, get in touch with people with whatever, touch with people with, that sounds horrendous. All right, um, and that's it. So feel free to take some notes. Um, this was to back off a, a survey where I asked for the two most, you know, comments or struggles for fitness instructors and this as well as with this and uh, losing weight for the long term were the two most popular uh, responses and can reply. So hitting up this one first, and then if all goes well and the feedback is good, um, or feel free to share your feedback, obviously, um, then we will look to do another one just for Christmas, perhaps, on how to lose weight and keep it off, you know, lose weight for the, for the, for the long term, okay? Um, and that's it. So let's jump straight in. For most of you, I do know most of you, there are a few a few um, sort of newcomers or a few people that I've not really met before. Um, so welcome to the land of myself, Tomatoes, and uh, Group X Nutrition. Uh, for those who, who don't, me, uh, don't know me, although I'm quite relaxed and quite uh, informal, uh, I, I am a certified uh, nutrition consultant, uh, and I do preach and, and coach a lot of evidence-based stuff. I'm not really one of um, extremism and restriction and all that kind of bullshit, okay? Uh, I just kind of tell it like it is generally. Um, everything is pretty much evidence-based, research kind of based. So uh, hopefully you enjoy a, a slightly different take on nutrition coaching from what uh, is, is really, well, from, from what a lot of other coaches and places kind of teach about uh, or, de or deliver. So let's get stuck in, all right? Let's get stuck in. The problem with this is obviously to learn how to calculate our kind of macros. So you know exactly what you're aiming for. Okay, have that clarity on protein, carbs, and fats and total calories. So even if you're not really, really kind of struggling, at least you know where you should be aiming for. And then if anybody comes across your path in terms of friends, gym participants, gym members, class members, then you can also get a little bit of guidance on it. Because there is a host, there is a ream of misinformation, you know, bullshit, diets, pseudoscience, you name it. A lot of nonsense out there, and it really grinds my gears, pisses me off to the end degree. Um, you know, so we just want everybody ideally to be on, on the same page, focusing on what really kind of matters, and ultimately just looking good, feeling good, without the anxiety, without the guilt, without the struggle, and all the rest of it, okay? That's the, that's the ultimate dream, the ultimate dream. So we're going to start the basics first, okay? So first couple of slides, you're just going to kind of nail out a few of the basics. So uh, I'll not spend too much time on here, and apologies if you already know this. Obviously, we're going to have quite a wide kind of group. Everybody will have different levels of, uh, of knowledge, experience, et cetera, et cetera. But we're just going to cover all the basics first. So energy balance, this is how it all goes. Energy in, energy out. Some people will like to refer it to CICO, C-I-C-O, okay? Calories in versus calories out. Essentially, it's that it's a scale system, okay? Energy balance. Fat loss can only be achieved through a net calorific deficit that is consistent over time. Okay, that's the crux. My first waggy figure moment is right now. Okay, that is consistent over time. And the three words that I will go on about is over the week. Over the week. Okay. If you're in a fat loss or if you're in a cat deficit for a day. Who gives a shit, okay? It's what happens in the next six days or the six days before that, that care deficit, okay? So eating well or being in a care deficit for a Monday is pretty pointless if you're just going to shit all over it for the rest of the week, right? Okay, so it's consistent over the week. Cool? Right, we move on. Are all diets the same? <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's my vary in terms of what approach they might have, i.e. they might be removing a macronutrient or limiting the window of eating, 
okay? Like intermittent fasting does. You know, you, you don't eat between, say, 8 o'clock in the morning and 8 o'clock at night. For those 12 hours, you, you're not allowed to eat. You need to eat in the morning and the afternoon. The goal of that really is to reduce the total amount of food that goes into your gob, okay? Just like restriction of calories from, from, from carbohydrates, the exact same thing. I'm a big fan of using analogies because coaching is about sort of learning, okay? You know, it's about fa facilitating learning and putting it across in a way that you and I are going to be able to un understand, okay? Because we're not doing PhDs. We're not launching rockets into Mars and shit like that. We are just like myself, you know, simple fella, just wants to know what the crack is, where any name for, and just go on with kind of stuff, okay? And most of us, I would imagine, are on the similar kind of irk. We just want to know what do we need to focus on um, and, and why. So analogies can be really, really useful for that. The way I like to describe diets, they're like motor cars, okay? And I appreciate we're not all going to be big motor car fans, but I'm sure we can uh, appreciate different types of cars out there on the road. Yep, you've got your four by fours, you've got your two-seater little sportster roasters, you've got your family cars, you've got your camper vans, you've got all different things, right? They are all different types of diets. And a camper van will suit some people, right? A two-seater, you know, Audi TT, BMW Z4 will suit some other people, okay? A family hatchback will suit maybe the families, some people, okay? So there's no best diet. There's no one that's better than the other. It all depends on what suits that person or that individual, okay? They're the exact same thing. A car gets you from A to B. Diets help you sort of, or try and get you to eat less calories. Simple as that, okay? Simple as that. <clears throat> now, how group and nutrition differs and why it works well, obviously, for fitness professionals is that we don't straight away go for reducing calories, reducing calories, right? We don't go straight for calorie restriction because one, we're a high activity fitness professional lifestyle, and two, it's but miserable to keep cutting out foods the whole time. So what we look to do is we look to create that energy deficit by tipping the scales the other way, okay? So if this is the kind of scales, energy in, energy out, instead of like most diets, cut calories, cut calories, cut calories, okay? What we do is we try to focus on increasing the output, create a deficit that way, okay? It's a lot easier. So small marginal increases across each of the four factors that make up your energy output, okay? And the fancy word is TDEE, -E, your total daily, total daily energy expenditure. Otherwise, just the, the energy out, calories out, okay? We'll look at a wee um, diagram in the, in the next slide. But that's what we aim for. We look to marginally increase each of the outputs by a couple of percent. And that way we create a deficit that doesn't mean we need to suddenly drastically cut foods, which means that it's a lot more enjoyable, but we still get the results and the changes that we want, i.e. looking leaner, feeling better, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So a picture paints a thousand words, as they say. So that little graphic, shall we call it, um, explains the total daily um, energy ex expenditure. Your total calories out are compromised from 60 to 65% of your metabolism, 15 to 20% of your NEAT, okay? Your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. For ease, I like to call that your lifestyle calories, okay? How many steps you take? What sort of job do you have? How active are you with perhaps your kids or the neighbor's kids in the park or something like that, you know? Your, your housework, your garden work, all these things, all this bit of activity that's not inside a four wall gym or studio, right? Notice how it's pretty much the same as exercise, okay? Exercise activity thermogenesis is the eat part, that light blue one. So exercise, that's your classes, that's your training, okay? Then TEF is the thermic effect of food, and that takes up for roughly 10 to 15%. So just by eating better or eating, eating more of a certain macronutrient, you can increase your calorie expenditure without doing a burpee, okay? Now, for somebody who used to teach Les Mills Grit and do hundreds and hundreds of burpees, I didn't really enjoy them. And anything that's going to make my life have less burpees in it is an absolute win, okay? So you can increase calorie expenditure without doing a single burpee by just eating, say, the right split of macronutrients. That is a win, okay? So the aim there is on the right-hand side, imagine we're trying to increase 
every one of those four factors by just a couple of percent. Okay, so say if it's 5%, 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, 20%. That is a significant increase in your calorie output. You've not had to reduce or miss out any of your favorite foods. You've not touched your food yet. You don't mean looked at it yet. Okay, just by focusing on this shit, you've already created a deficit. And that is complete opposite direction to what every type of diet tries to get you to do. All right. <clears throat> so the results basically for, for you or for anybody that goes along that kind of path or, or, or takes us on board is that it's easy and achievable fat loss. No energy dumps, fewer food cravings and binges because there's, there's now nothing off, off, off limits, okay? There's nothing now that you need to worry about or kind of stress about. There's fewer food cravings and binges, long-term results and change, which is what we all want. You still get to eat your favorite foods. And the best part is you're not on a diet, okay? Because that has its own negative psychology as well. Okay, it's a, it's a word that shoots up cortisol. It's a word that just, you know, kind of like causes stress, unnecessary stress and kind of tension, all right? So we, do, we, we don't really want to even talk about being on a kind of diet ideally. I'm going to have a quick chat, a quick look into the chat here to see if there's anything I'm, I'm missing here. Uh, all right, no, cool. Cake, cake, cake. Yep, there it is. Fine, perfect. Okay, cool. So I thought just in case there was a wee problem there or something. Okay, cool. I know I'm going 100 mile an hour. Probably should have said right at the start that, I do speak quite quick. I get a bit carried away. So I will try and rein it back in every now and again. The beauty is you'll all get this recorded. So if you need to slow it down to like 0.75 times speed, then uh, then you can do that as well, obviously. All right. But hopefully everybody's on board with that uh, so far. So quickly going to cover the role of each macronutrient. <clears throat> the purpose of this slide is basically to stop or hopefully try to stop you having any fear about any of those macronutrients. Okay, because you can only get energy from one of those three ones. The fourth one is alcohol. Okay, but we don't really want to be sourcing uh, gin and wine and beer as a means to kind of fuel our bodies to like teach. Okay, that's just that's just something really, really different. Okay. <clears throat> um, so yeah, three macronutrients. All right, protein, amino acids. So amino acids are the building blocks of protein. Okay, twenty-two amino acids um, across the spectrum. Amino acids build and maintain muscle tissue, builds and promotes promotos, uh, it's kind of potatoes in there, it looks like, promotos, growth of hair, skin, and nails. Okay, so ladies, if you're not too worried about muscle tissue, let's think about looking lovely with our fantastic looking hair, skin, and nails. Yeah, so we need protein, okay? Carbohydrates provide energy, act as a muscle protector, basically to protect against the catabolism of muscle tissue which is under stress from exercise. Now, every time that you teach pump, grit, sprint, um, a Peloton workout, a spin, uh, a yoga, anything, boot camp, box exercise, you name it, okay? You're stressing the body, central nervous system, muscle tissue, okay? That's how you elicit change. That's how you develop strength and, 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 and yeah, elicit change, okay? It's by stressing the body. You are looking to break down the muscle tissue and then to rebuild it. OK, now, if you have the right amount of carbohydrates, you divert the body's response for energy to carbs and not breaking down your muscle tissue. OK, so really, really kind of key. Plus, it's a major component in energy and recovery, energy recovery. But so if you're teaching more than six classes a week, more than two classes a day, any one of those two, then recovery is an absolute key. It should be like a top two priority. The last but not least, fats. Fats provide energy for low intensity exercise, aids in assimilation of fat soluble vitamins and transportation of fatty acids, okay? Important things, all right? Very important bodily functions. So the nutshell is, the takeaway is, we need them all, okay? We're not gonna omit or restrict any one of our macronutrients. So what I have been working to, coaching towards for a number of years, is a five-step plan to create your own macronutrients, okay? And this is pretty much identical, okay? When I send the emails and all that kind of stuff, no bullshit, it wasn't a marketing tagline. This is the exact same process I use when I'm calculating macros and calories for my private clients, okay? This food diary, they get a food diary. Then I will set a calorie deficit <clears throat> based on their history, experience, goals, experience in terms of um, experiences, circumstances, 
whether they have a dieting history or not, whether they've got an athletic history or not. Put everything into the mix, okay? It's like a big cauldron. More information we need, as much information we kind of need, all goes into the kind of pot, and then I will decide whether it's what sort of deficit, if there is going to be one, is going to be needed, okay? Then I'll get to work, and I will set protein first, and then I'll set fats, and then I'll set carbs, okay? So the exact same process. So, <clears throat> excuse me, how to track? Fairly kind of simple. You've got to read some food labels. You can use the Group X Nutrition Tracker. You can use my fitness pal. These are all best estimates, okay? Do not stress the 1%. Track for seven days and try to have a normal seven days. Right. Excuse me. Excuse me. So, to read food labels, pretty much everything that you buy, bar maybe croissants out of a bakery and a couple of other little things, will have a food label on it will be down to 100 grams or a kilogram or a, a portion size of, you know, a steak pie or a this or that, you know, two rashers or 100 mils or half a portion of this bacon lentil soup or something like that, whatever it may be, okay? Um, read a few labels, a little, little bit of simple math are designed, or they mean, they're, they're fairly simple and designed to help everybody, okay, with, you know, basic levels sort of mass and, and everything else to, to, to figure out how much, how many calories, protein, carbs they're having by the 100 grams or two rashers or half a portion size or whatever it may be, okay? The food label packaging should be there to help you figure out roughly how much protein, carbs, fats, total calories you're having from anything that you buy from the supermarket. You can obviously use the Group X Nutrition Tracker or you can use my fitness pal as well, okay? My fitness pal, widely known, widely used. Uh, it's one of those ones where when you start using it, it does take a bit of time to kind of punch it in and it's, it's Tesco dairy-free this or it's Tesco soya this or it's whatever it may be, okay? But once you've done that a couple of times for a couple of days, you will soon see that you eat the majority of the same foods time and time again. And it becomes a lot quicker and a lot easier to punch in your breakfast, lunch, and, and dinner stuff, okay? So it gives you a really good, easy way to look at um, your total macros that, that, that you're consuming, okay? By using my fitness pal. And I think you still have the free one and you can also have the kind of premium version which costs a couple of credit and get an extra couple of uh, bonuses or, or, or um, what's we're looking for features within that as well, okay? Uh, these are your best estimates. Now, remember we said literally in slide number two, the very first wing, finger wagging moment, we don't stress the 1%, okay? Because we're focusing over the week. So if you allow for small modular errors, you know, in a day, yep, that's not too great. But when you margin that, when you count for that over three, four, five, six, seven days, then it all kind of evens itself out, okay? Because you're looking not narrowly, like in, a, in, a, in an hour or in a day's perspective, but then you're sitting back and taking everything into account from the whole week, okay? So best estimates, do not stress the 1%, okay? Because whether it's 39 or 40 grams, it's not going to make a huge difference, okay? So, you know, um, run up your figures if you want, just don't stress the 1%. Track for seven days, I would normally say do at least five, but include the weekend. If you're going to do five, why not do seven? Okay, just do Monday through to Sunday. All right, again, it's the week we're looking for, not just one day. And when I say have a normal seven days, it's because we don't want to see a food diary of, of what you're like, you know, having a good week, okay, or where you would like to be, okay, or anything like that. We need to see, or you need to see where you are right? It's brutal honesty, okay? There's no judgment here. Trust me, for somebody who eats tubes of Pringles in, in a wanna watching TV sometimes, there's no judgment, okay? None at all. Whatever you're eating, whatever your habits are, it needs to be a true reflection on that bit of paper. So you can see, go, okay, that's all I'm having. Oh, not too good. Okay, I'm I'm not eating for like six hours on this Wednesday and I'm teaching three classes. Mm, you know, that's not too good kind of thing. Or on a Thursday or Friday, you're not eating anything until like lunchtime because Thursday mornings like busy classes or busy school drop off or whatever it may be. Okay. You will literally see on that bit of paper where there's little kind of gaps, where you've shorting, where you've falling short. Okay. And you will see that once you know what you should be aiming for. Okay, that's why you need to know where you are right now, honestly, but also know where you're going to, because without those two things, one's pretty much useless without the other. Yeah. Okay, so that's why we take 
what I call an investment of time. The seven days for, I know we are uh, instant gratification society nowadays. We want everything instantly, but sometimes it takes more than a quick flick of the button or something like that. We need a couple of days to track, see where you're at, figure out your average protein intake, your average carb intake, your average calorie intake across the week. Then we know where we can kind of like work our magic from and, and everything else, okay? And then the end result, we need to know where we are off of there as well, okay? Cool. So, excuse me, just have a quick. So, once you have tracked for seven days, you will have, you know, you, you have a daily macros for every day and total calories for every day. Add them all up and then divide by seven. Okay, so say Monday calories was like 1800, Tuesday was like 1700, Wednesday was like 2000, Thursday, whatever. Add them all up, divide by seven, and you'll now have your average or your maintenance calories across the week of a true week that you have. Okay, now say, for example, I think I used the number 1800, excuse me. Say, for example, your average is 1800 calories, 1800 calories. Now you can decide whether you're going to even set a calorie deficit, okay? Out of every sort of 10 private clients, I would set a deficit probably for about eight of them. And the majority of them will get a very, very small deficit, around about like the 5% mark. It's quite rare that a, a client will get like 10% or 10% or, 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 10 or, or 12%, okay? It's normally pretty much on the money, okay? Because what we're looking to do is increase the output, as you said, early doors, okay? Or it's marginal. It's like a 5%. It's, a, it's like one in 10 chance that somebody will get a 10%. But even looking at that screen, at that PDF presentation, 10% is still regarded as a small deficit, okay? So small, moderate, or large. Now, no size does matter. Yes, all right, ladies, doesn't matter. But most times, the first time in your life, you want to go for the smaller option, okay? Small deficit is what you want this time, okay? Modern and large, by all means, you know, if we are professional uh, weight category athletes, if we, if we are working, you know, closely one-to-one, -one, reverse dieting, tracking back off, losing weight, dropping, you know, all these kind of things, then at times for a short period, going for a moderate or large deficit calorie, uh, calorie deficit would work fine, okay? But for fitness instructors, for you and for me and for 99.9% of the population out there, a small deficit, when you focus on the output as well, will be plenty, okay? Will be plenty. Um, particularly if you're talking about long-term sustainable stuff and changing your lifestyle as opposed to going through a horrible four weeks to drop six pounds for a fight or for a competition or for a weigh-in or anything like that, okay? You and me... I don't believe that we're living that kind of lifestyle, okay? Um, so that's why it's specific to finish instructors. So set protein first, okay? So now we've got a number. Now we decided that if we're going to set a deficit or not. So first step, we track, we get our maintenance, our average calories, 1,800. Then for the sake of the exercise, okay, for the sake of the, of the, the presentation, the workshop, we will set a 10% calorie deficit, okay, 10% of 1800, 180. So now we know maintenance deficit, okay? Now that number, 1620, that's what we're aiming for. That's our end target bullseye. We're gonna set protein first. Why do we set protein first? Because it's the most important macronutrient, okay? It's the most important one. For these number of reasons, amino acids cannot be synthesized, that's a fancy word for made, okay, or created from carbs or fats because carbs and fats lack a, a chemical called nitrogen. Carbs, fats have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Protein has those three plus nitrogen, okay? So carbs and fats can't make protein because they don't have all the things that protein kind of needs to be made from, if that makes sense, okay? Your body cannot store amino acids. This is huge. This is why we need to be having protein regularly out throughout the day because your body, unlike, again, carbs and fats, which can be stored in body fat tissue and skeletal muscle tissue and even in your liver, okay? You can store glycogen, you can store carbs in your liver as well. Your body cannot store protein. 
You eat it, for example, say eight o'clock in the morning, between nine and 11 will be maximum amino acid um, uh, doses through your kind of bloodstream. And by 12 o'clock, so four hours later, you'll be come back to net zero. So if you can, on my little waggy finger, here it is, eating protein, goes up, peaks, and comes back down. And before hours later, it's back to that net zero, okay? Which is why we need to be eating it on a regular basis. The best thing is we mentioned about the thermal effect of foods, these extra calories that protein burns. It's because it takes six to eight times more energy to digest and assimilate than it does carbs or fats. Okay, so that's where this sort of like extra calorie burning comes from. It's just from actually having the right amount of protein. Protein maintains the portion of muscle tissue. Now, I know, obviously, been in fitness for a long, 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 long time. You know, ladies and, and, and one woman out there are a bit apprehensive about anything that's to do with muscle tissue because you don't want to be big and bulky, et cetera, et cetera. But if we're fitness professionals, we want to be strong, we want to be lean, we want to be energetic. Picking up a body, bar, body pump barbell, picking up anything, a kettlebell, you name it, picking up your kids. Walking up flatter steps require muscle tissue. That's where strength comes from. Okay. If you're aspiring to have a lean, you know, shapely athletic body, there's muscle tissue underneath, underneath your skin. Okay. So, you know, it's, it shouldn't be that scaremongering or that worry that have, looking after muscle tissue means big, massive, muscly, ripped physiques because it's not that easy. Trust me, ask any guy down in the gym how easy it is to put on muscle and he will tell you it's difficult, okay? And men, judging by face hair and deeper voices, we have a lot more testosterone than, than women and, and, and ladies do, okay? And that's the kind of anabolic you know, hormone uh, that, differenti that differentiates us, men, men and women, okay? Ooh, moderate to high protein intake is key for fat loss as well, okay? Just as we kind of covered there. So, all very well. Now, the American Sports College uh, Medicine Guidelines. So, here are some guidelines. Here are some numbers we can work with. 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of your body weight. Okay? So, think about your body weight in kilograms. <clears throat> so, if you're definitely in the UK, you'll need to do a little bit of, little bit of math. Figure out your pounds divided by 2.2. Okay? Uh, and figure out your, kind of, your, your kilograms your body weight in kilograms, punch about 1.6, 1.8 or two, okay? Side note, it's four calories per, per gram. The generic population guidance for to prevent illness and disease is 0.8 and one gram per kilogram body weight, okay? Between 0.3 and 0.1 in terms of the, on, on the slides, that is literally half, okay? So generic population, your sedentary, individual okay jane and john walking down the street that's all they need to have is say one gram per kilogram body weight because they are not doing what you are doing you are doing fitness you're doing high intensity you are stressing your body you're doing you know stuff that is difficult hard challenging fatigues your muscle tissue breaks down your muscle tissue okay so in terms of this, uh, the AC, ASCM guidelines, that is a guideline that is linked and aligned with resistance training, uh, like HIIT workouts, and kind of weight training, okay? Like metabolic conditioning stuff, okay? So if it, it's, it's that population, it's that lifestyle, it's that activity that we need to sort of align to, okay? So we're on, we're, that's why we need more, because we're doing a lot more. Okay, in terms of stressing our body, particularly a muscle tissue. That's why we need literally nearly double what Jane and John, you know, do or need. Okay. Safe doses are way up to like 3.4 grams per kilogram body weight. Okay. It's way, way, way high. Okay. Nobody's going to be going anywhere near kind of three and three grams plus. If you were an elite bodybuilder or something like that, yep, you might get up to those numbers in like the final week of, of kind of con con uh, contest. Uh, and preparation, all the stuff of like dro dropping the last few kind of pounds, okay? But not for us. Anywhere around the, the two gram mark is a pretty good place to start. The scaremongering due to pre existing kidney disease, okay? I don't know if it happens like in cycles, okay? But 2019, we were very fearful of carbs because the insulin fairy came out and just scared us shitless, okay? But fats were good. The 2020, fats were bad again, and then carbs were good, okay? And then 2021, Protein was bad and the carbs and fats were good as well, okay? It's like, we can't make up our freaking minds as to what's good and what's bad. 
but the, 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 the kind of joke is that nothing's that, you know, nothing's that bad. Everything, obviously, with a bit of moderation. It sounds boring to say that, but any bit of moderation, but we don't need to be kind of scared or worried about kidney disease because every one of those um, so-called research papers that were done had people that had pre-existing kidney disease, okay? And they cherry-picked that data to kind of put the fear amongst that kind of protein, okay? So there's always something, you know, not, not in the center stuff. There's always a bit of a, uh, an agenda behind some of these cherry-picked research papers, okay? And even more essential in the aging population because of decline in testosterone levels through men and women, okay? Particularly with um, um, uh, the bones as well, okay? Resistance training, weight training, increasing posture, looking after your kind of posture, muscle tissue is really, really important as you age from 50 plus, 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 okay? So protein, really important. Set fats next. So fats are essential to our health as we covered, our hormones, our everyday energy use. Because when we're exercising really, really high intensities, we shift 90% of our energy to carbs. When we are 70% or low and doing everyday stuff, steps, gardening, housework, picking up kids, playing in the park, going for a, a gentle bike ride, walking the dog, we use predominantly fats, okay? So that's why I call it everyday energy use. Fats do not make me or you fat. Obviously, uh, intentional, incorrect spelling of fat. Good fats are also nine calories per gram. Okay, true story. All right, good fats, bad fats, all nine calories per gram. Okay, so just be aware of piling on the nuts and avocados and all kind of stuff thinking, oh, it's all fine, it's all fine, the good fats. Yeah, you want some of them in your diet, 100%, okay? But they still contain calories. And calories is what causes weight gain and weight loss. So we need to be a bit more, just a bit careful of that. Excuse me. The UK Dietetics Association recommends 20 to 30% of your total daily calories to come from fats, okay? 20 to 30%, that's a real good sweet spot. And yes, you can drop to 10 or 15% for a very, 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 very short time if you had to, and you can exceed that to 33, 35% if you really, really had to, okay? Or if your nutrition preferences just really, you really liked foods that had high kind of fat content in it. Okay, um, so if you were all about, you know, the nuts, the avocados, the oily fish, blah, blah, blah. Okay, then, yeah, you, you might you might have 30 to kind of 35 percent, which is not not a problem. But generally, a pretty good starting place is 20 to 2 to 30 percent. We don't really want to drop below 20 percent. Okay, um, that's kind of like bottom range. Okay, I've got no private clients that go anywhere below 20 percent. All right, it's generally between 20 to kind of 30 percent. And a lot of that will really dictate on the sheer volume of classes they have, as well as their food diary, showing me what their food preferences are. So if somebody, for example, is having like quite a high fat intake, I won't drop it to 20% because there'll be too much of a change. Okay, so say if they're having 600 calories through fats, I'll probably try to bring it down to 500 calories and then 450, as opposed to going straight down from 600 to 300, because that's not going to be sustainable, okay? Then the rest of the calories is carbs. So you start off with a, a full pie, if you imagine, all right? A full pie, 1620, 620 calories, your full pie. You take away protein, take away fats. What's left? Carbohydrates, okay? Carbs will always be your body's preferred energy fuel source. Sorry for the keto fans for that one. Four calories per gram as well, just like protein. The more intense your teaching or training, the faster you will burn carbohydrate, okay? Or go through it like litmus paper. So if you do body combat, body attacks, grits, um, what's the other kind of hit stuff that's coming out? Is it like blaze and ignites and a few other things like that or burny, burny things? Any kind of hit training, okay, is going to be, you know, 80 to 90% carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is going to be your fuel, all right? Carbs generates ATP quicker than fats. So it's all about physiology. It's all about the energy pathways it's all about the chemical reactions that required to be to, to break down a macronutrient convert it into either glucose or pyruvate in terms of like fatty acids and stuff and ultimately into atp so if you remember remember back to your level two level three uh fitness kind of qualification you may have just touched on the three energy systems yeah and atp is quite important okay because that's basically your your your, your sales energy currency now, this is the, the, the pros and cons. 
to take glucose and to get 38 ATP is super quick, right? Real, real quick, okay? But it's only 38. So one glucose molecule will give you about 38 uh, ATP, adenos, adenosine triphosphate, something like that, okay? A fatty acid will give you 129 ATP, okay? But it's much slower, all right? So in order to break down a fatty acid takes time, okay? Aerobically. So that, imagine this is a long marathon run. You don't need the energy instantly to the muscle because you're not banging out burpees and cleaner presses and all this kind of stuff and need tuck jumps and whatever, okay? You're doing everyday stuff. So the bus, you know, gets there slower, but there's more people on the bus, okay? Glucose is the car, gets there faster, but it's only like four people on the bus. There's less people on the bus, less ATP, okay? There's an analogy number two for the, uh, for the workshop, okay? So... It's just something to bear in mind. Carbs also prevent muscle breakdown for fuel, as I touched on uh, one of the earlier slides. So let's put it into practice, okay? It's all very well saying that, okay? So let's put it into practice very, very quick. <clears throat> First, work out your average from your food diary. So step one, you're going to track seven days worth of investment. Then step two, you're going to choose a 10% deficit, if you so wish, as I said. So we're going to aim for now 1620. That's our target. Step number three, set protein. Nice and simple. You can pick a number, like 1.6, 1.8, 2, or 2.2. For the ease of today's kind of workshop, we'll go for two. Two grams per kilogram body weight for a 60 kilogram person. So that's about 132 pounds or so. 120 grams of protein. All right. So now we're going to be aiming for, <clears throat> excuse me, around about 120 grams of protein a day. Divide that into three, four, or five meals. Probably what works best is probably around about four meals in terms of like four portions of protein. Now that could be three meals and a shake. Okay, it can be two very big meals and then like two kind of shakes. Okay, generally, obviously, we want to be having you know more food, more meals. But being in the street for a while, looking at a lot of food diaries, everybody's really really different. Okay. This perfect idea of these three set meals sometimes for us isn't, isn't, isn't really feasible just for whatever reason. Classes, work, family, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So you might only have the opportunity of having two big meals. It's like a big breakfast, a couple of snacks throughout the day, and then like a big dinner at home kind of thing, okay? Or you might have the, the opportunity or the privilege, whatever it may be, or the, 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 the circumstance, we can have a proper three or four meals through the day, okay? But the key is, you can divide that up into three or four chunks quite easily. 120 divided by three is 40 grams. Okay, so that's, that's quite a big portion. Or as I said, I'll go for four. 120 divided by four is 30 grams, right? That's a good size, you know, feasible, easy to, to sort of do uh, protein portion size, all right? In terms of our total calories, 120 grams of protein, we times about four calories per gram, gives us now 480 calories. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Yep, 120 grams of protein, four calories per gram, 120 by four is now 480. Next up, we move to fats. So step number four, moving to fats. So let's just punch right down the middle, compromise. 25% of our total calories will come from fats. Right, our total calories, if you remember, was 1620. So the percentage, if you go back to kind of school, hopefully, this will, this will sound fairly um, logical, hopefully. 25% in decimal point is 0 0.24, 0 0.25, big opponent, right? 0 0.25, all right? So 0 0.25 times 1620 is 405 calories, okay? So it's basically a quarter, right? A quarter of 1620. The other way to do that is obviously 1620 divided by four. Okay, but as long as you kind of see the kind of math in there. Now to work out how many grams that is, we divide the calories by the nine, nine calories per gram, which gives us 45 grams. Okay, so it's the opposite way around, right? Protein, we take the grams, times it by the body weight, we get 120 grams. Now we know how much protein, 120 grams. Now we need times up by calories. For fats, we kind of do it the other way around. We know, we know the percentage of our total calories that we want from fats, 0.25, okay? 0.25. Now we worked out 
how many calories that is, which is four and a five. We could go backwards instead of times in by four or times by nine. Now we divide by nine. Okay. I'll let that just sit for a quick second. Hopefully that that kind of sink in. Okay. Come back to these slides. Obviously at any time you you, you kind of you kind of want or need. But essentially now we have protein grams, fats grams. We also have protein calories and obviously fat calories. Okay. So cool. We move on. And now we know what's left of the, of the pie that we kind of spoke about. We were aiming for 1620. We've taken away 480 of protein calories. Yeah. And I'll take away 405 of our fat calories. So what's left is 735 calories. Now that's calories from carbohydrate. 735 calories of carbohydrate. How do we work out how many grams that is? Well, we divide it by four, all right? So once 735 divided by four is 184 grams, excuse me. So now we should have how, how many grams of protein, fats, and carbs, and how many calories, protein, fats, and carbs, okay? And they'll all add up to 1620, which is 10% of our calorie deficit. Okay, have a quick look at the chat here in case. Okay, cool, that makes sense, makes sense. Okay, cool. All right. So I don't want to just go over that, you know, again and again. I'll leave that with you. You know, oops, slice, try to make them fairly um, sort of rounded kind of numbers and just explain every step by, by every step. So feel free to have a look at that uh, in case you need to go over it again. Okay. But that's it. Now we have a total for each macronutrient for us to help us aim for a new calorie target. Yep. So now all the little building blocks are kind of falling into place. Yep. We've got a deficit where we're aiming for, if you wanted one, of course. Got a protein target, got a fats target, and got a carbs target. Yep, hallelujah, brilliant, right? That's what I do with private clients, okay? The only difference between literally this and obviously what I do with them is that look into all the kind of like history, okay? All the goals, their class, their activity, their steps, uh, and dining history, blah, 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 food preferences, you name it, okay? Everything else can put into it. And then that will help me decide whether it's 1.6 or 2.2, whether it's going to be at 20 or 25 percent, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so this is just a, 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 a you know um, not rough guide, but the exact same process. Just we're just kind of picking um, specific numbers for 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 ease. So now we have a much clearer and more suitable target to aim for that meets your needs. Yeah, fitness professionals' needs. So <clears throat> excuse me, the takeaway in the summary. Last slide. You need a nutrition approach suited to your needs and not an extreme or generic public diet, okay? Because going back to the slide about how much protein you need, straight away you can see the kind of, the kind of issue, yep. Protein will be set really low, but you need really high. What happens if you follow something like keto, okay? Keto protein is like moderate, fats very high, carbs very low. Not no carb, by the way. Big misconception about keto. Okay, it's not no carb, it's low carb. Now, how low do you need to know? Well, that's where unfortunately keto should really be done by dietitians or a nutrition coach that's kind of qualified because it's not just no carbs. It needs to be a certain amount of carbs to keep you in ketosis because the only fuel your brain can use is actually carbs and glucose. So you don't want to be having zero carbs, okay? Because you put yourself into like a, a coma, okay? Which isn't very good. So uh keto as well high fats low carb okay but what do we know about energy systems and energy usage if you're doing anything above 70 percent this is what you need you need carbs where are your carbs oh fuck sorry i'm on keto sounded really cool but you know hey ho okay that's the problem all right that's the problem and again the ketogenic diet was designed and and as is used amongst dietitians for generic population who are grossly obese in weight, okay? Not you teaching 10 classes a week, okay? Who just wants to lose five, you know, six pounds, five pounds, maybe a stone or something like that, okay? See the difference, okay? <clears throat> Again, back to the cars, yeah? If you've got a family of, say, five, buying an Audi TT with two seats, what fucking use is that, right? No use, okay? It's the wrong tool for the job. Over the week, those three words, over the week, okay? So sometimes you get really narrow-minded and you're thinking about stressing about today. 
today I wasn't a deficit or today I didn't eat enough protein. Today I did that, right? Just chill out. You got a week, right? Sit back, look at the bigger picture, bigger picture. Consistency is key. You know that. I don't need to tell you anything about consistency. Exact same thing that you would tell anybody coming to a class, your class tomorrow morning, okay? Their first time in. What are you going to tell them? You're not going to tell them. You need to hit this 100 mile an hour, right? Morning, afternoon for the next seven weeks. You say, listen, just, you know, be consistent. Twice a week, three times a week, you know, blah, blah, whatever. Make, make it sustainable. As long as you enjoy it and you can stick to it, that's what's key, right? Tell yourself that when it comes to nutrition as well because it's the exact same thing, exact same thing. The 10% margins, I kind of f- f- forgot about this a little bit. Not a little bit, but it's in there for a reason, but... To talk about this now is that generally everything's with a 10% margin. Okay. So remember those numbers that we set. So those are numbers to aim for. But what I would look for from a client from Monday to Sunday is not protein 120, 120, 120, 120, because that's just not going to happen. Okay. Not going to happen. What I would expect to see and would want to see perhaps is something like 110, 125, 115, 125, again, 105, maybe 130. Or whatever, all right, working within a 10% margin of each macronutrient, total calories throughout the week. Okay, so 10% margins. Give yourself a little bit of breathing space. Protein and carbs are your best bet for your best classes. Energy and performance, all right, carbs and protein, protein and carbs. There's no way around it, all right. That doesn't mean that I'm not anti fat fan by any means. No, you, you need fats. I want you to eat fats. Fats are tasty and stuff like that. But for, for performance and recovery, it's all about muscle glycogen replenishment, which is protein and carbs. Weight and fat loss is calorie, not macro driven. Okay. That don't mean that you shouldn't worry about what your macros are. What I mean is that removing a macro is not going to cause fat loss. Okay. Reducing your calories is going to, re- you know, uh, help you lose weight and fat loss. Okay. Touches on to the cleaner eating thing, myth, bullshit, whatever you want to call it, okay? You know, in order to lose weight, you need to eat cleaner foods. Fair enough. What happens if your fat loss stores while you're eating clean foods? Do you eat cleaner clean foods or do you eat less calories in smaller portions? Yeah, fewer calories, smaller portions, less calories because that's what drives fat loss, not clean foods, okay? Results lie in the unsexy bit of common sense, unfortunately, which is a real hard sell, okay? It's hard to sell common sense, okay? It's much easier to sell, you know, myths and magic and fancy words and intermittent fasting and keto and all this other nonsense. Common sense is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a hard sell because it's a logic sell and we're emotive creatures, okay? We are emotively driven, emotionally driven rather, and emotively driven, okay? So we always go for that quick fix. And you have that thing in the back of your head going, oh, no, this is stupid. I know this detox won't work. I know this Gwyneth Paltrow bit of pish won't work, but I'm going to try it anyway because the marketing looks great. And Gwyneth says it works for her, you know, says Cambridge and Herbalife and fucking everybody else, okay? So the, the little thing in the back of your head is telling you like, no, 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 don't do it. That's your logic put ahead. But the motive side of it is like, yeah, man, I'm all in. Take my money. I want to do it kind of thing, okay? So just be, just, just be aware of that, that we are emotively driven. Um, just, just something to be aware of. Your body shape is determined by your habits and your mindset, okay? 100%. Habits, mindset, perception of food, self-worth, all big things behind the front of macros, okay? Um, I have an email going out next week talking about an all or nothing approach, okay? And I just kind of touch on that in order to really coach people, we need to understand people because just giving you a set of macros is great, right? Of course, it's going to give you something to aim for. But in order to make that long-term, sustainable lifestyle change, you really need to understand your emotive triggers, your perception, your your words, your self-language, all these kind of things that really drive your daily habits, okay? That's the, the big, you know, stuff that's kind of curling up inside, the conversation going in your head, how you look at food, how you how you view this and how you view that kind of stuff, you know, because there's been years of scaremongering about carbs, years about scaremongering about fats and everything else. Okay, so hopefully it's it's, it's clear things up a little bit, um, but we always need to focus on on that stuff more than just saying, oh, here's a couple of recipes and eat more of this and drink less of this and whatever else like that. Okay, 
yeah, we, we need some of that stuff if it's really, really good and really relatable and specific, 100%, okay, which is why we kind of did tonight. But there's all the other stuff as well that that's, um, is really, really important as well, of course. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to talk myself horse. So voice is nearly done. We've got five minutes to share. Uh, I think it's the last slide. Yeah, it's the last slide there. So as I said, um, any thoughts or questions can get me on, you can see that my Instagram handle, most of you probably know it, Tim underscore nutrition coach. Um, and just going back to, to that one there, you know, nutrition approach, okay? There's tons of free stuff. There's tons of like, you know, really, really great free stuff that's designed for specific foot instructors on the kind of bio. So if you've not had a look yet, have, have a quick look, help yourself to whatever free stuff and, and, and whatever, whatever's there to, to kind of help you along. But hopefully um, it's certainly kind of got you moving in the, in the right direction. So I'll knock this off. Um, I'll just go back. So. Any questions? We've got five minutes, six minutes. So no pressure. You don't have to give me a question, but there's something there on the tip of your tongue. Feel free to unmute yourself. Emma's got it. Good. Vanessa's got it. Perfect. Oh, I missed something. Excuse me. Oh. All right. Okay. Leslie's asked, what's your thoughts on hitting a fiber total? Recently been advised hitting protein and fiber and rest falls into place. Hmm. Slightly oversimplification, but yes, definitely in terms of priorities, um, you, you want protein as, as, as we explained, as, 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 we, yeah, as we discussed to be literally number one and fiber to be really high up. So general guidelines for a woman ran about 25 grams of fiber daily and um, men run about the 30 to 35 grams daily. Okay. That's, you know, generic rough fiber guidance for men and women. Okay. 25 to kind of 35. 25 women, big opponent, 35 to kind of men. So what I would do, first of all, is again, track, see how much fiber you're taking in on an average over a week. And if you are quite low, say like 15 or 10, 15, I wouldn't try to jump from 10 to 25 within a day or two. I would slowly just ramp up. Okay, go from 10 to 15 for a week. And then from 15 to uh, 20 for another week and then slowly try to get to kind of 25. Okay. Um, so yeah. Second part to that is that you generally find protein, I beg your pardon, fiber is linked to food quality and obviously kind of um, having more plants in your, in, your, in your diet as well, okay? So if you, you know, have an 80 percent rule of having a lot of like high value foods, okay, like oats and spinach and um, a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, then your fiber will kind of take care of itself. If you find that you're not a big fruit or veg fan, you don't like lentils, you don't like porridge in the morning, all that kind of stuff, then your fiber is going to be quite kind of low. Excuse me. You would definitely try to get the fiber up 100%, okay? In terms of us, in terms of working on the coach, it generally falls down the kind of radar from in terms of fat loss, in terms of performance and, and energy. But from a health point of view, yeah, of course, fiber is important. It cleans out our guts. It's like roughage, different types of fiber as well. So. You just want, you know, a, a good, varied, high nutrition, no sort of uh, diet as, as much as we can. You know, the whole plant and animal thing and whatever else, for, for me, as, as a, a certified nutrition person, coach, consultant, uh, a bit of everything is really good. Yeah, we, we want plants, we want fruits, we want vegetables. Winter time now, great for stews and soups and et cetera, et cetera, all that, okay? Uh, and, and obviously, there's some really great high nutrition uh, animal sources out there as well, you know, dairies and fish and et cetera, et cetera. So a little bit of everything, but uh, fiber is definitely important. Yeah, definitely get it up. So around about those kind of numbers is what you want. 25 grams for woman, 30 to 35 grams for, for men. All right. Yep. And as Emma says, it's uh, also Emma, Emma says, yep. Super helpful and insight. Yep. Put into practice. That's, that's it. Yep. That's, that's the kind of crux. And that's literally what I can touch on right at the end about the, the habits and the mindset and the last, all that kind of stuff. That's where, it's all going to sort of come into come into kind of place, but now you've got the, a bit of you know um, clarity. That's that's all it was. A bit of clarity on what they're aiming for. Cool. I'm going to wrap it up there because for the first time, I think literally and ever, I'm going to finish a workshop or a webinar before time is up. So uh, I'm going to make this the first one of 2021 at least. 
So 58 for nine minutes. Uh, thank you again so much for everybody who has dialed in. And thank you even more so for staying tuned and not falling asleep. Um, anything that comes up in the next you know, day or couple of weeks, whenever it is, feel free to, to reach out on Instagram, on Facebook, wherever. Uh, this will go out um, probably on Thursday once I've got the, the recording off of uh, Zoom and everything. And then uh, it will go out. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. And if all goes well, feel free to let me know your, your, your thoughts. And, uh, you know, spread the word by all means, because we want to get everybody away from misculture, mis misinformation, diet culture, et cetera, et cetera. Feel free to kind of spread the word. And when the fat loss uh, workshop webinar comes up, uh, hopefully to have you, have you back on board. And that's it. All right, no worries at all. Carl and Karen and Vanessa and Emma, thank you very much, everybody. I shall let you go. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday evening. Uh, stay warm, stay safe, and we shall see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Right. No worries at all. Thanks, Tom. No worries, Emma. Talk soon. Yes. Bye.